Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number 11, I believe, of the NCP Nimbus. And we're up against Kurt and his Portage Herdiers. Uh, this is going to be a really, really stressful matchup. So obviously, uh, this is going to be another one of those situations where we have to win or else we are completely out of it. And he's going to be playing for um, a solid seed. I think he can make it in pretty comfortably, but he's obviously trying to get up the seeding as much as possible. Um, but again, like I've been mentioning in the past, uh, it's been a little bit difficult to kind of find um, the motivation for this. So I built really quickly again. Um, I still feel really confident in this team. I really like the way that this team kind of interacts here. I think it has a lot of different parts to it. But here we see just in team preview uh, a lot of threats, a lot, a lot of threats. However, I'm really... Um, surprised not to see the Garbodor. I thought this hazard stacking would be fantastic against me. It usually is when I just have an Eldegoss, but in particular uh, this week with the Drake Assault uh, that can do just a lot here. Uh, and I was honestly kind of surprised not to see the Blastoise. I thought even Shell Smash Blastoise, I mean, I'm, I'm not even too sure how good of a matchup it had against me, but it just felt really strong in general. And um, other than that, uh, I, part of me expected the Sneasel to come. I thought the Sneasel had um, a lot of s different options, but overall, I, f I came with what I felt like I had to. Right, another choice specs right you another choice specs Dragapult, and um, this is one of those things again. Uh, I just feel like I haven't been as creative as I can be with these builds and part of it comes down to motivation part of it just comes down to um, me not feeling the most comfortable around this team again this was a team that I inherited Silver Smasher drafted a fantastic fantastic team but um, it, I think my comfort level with it is just not entirely there and I really don't think I made the team better in transactions. I think definitely some transactions were needed but uh, the ones that I went with I think ultimately aren't helping as much as I would have liked for them to. But regardless uh, we're going to see a pretty standard again e Eevee Light Ride On and three leftovers mons. Um, it pretty much just removal uh, Eldegoss that can kind of take hits. A Sylveon that I felt I really needed to not let the Orbito get out of hand um, as well as just kind of like to switch into certain things. Um, the Eldegoss I thought switched in well to the Keldeo. I felt it was important for that and I felt like this double had a chance to kind of win the match on its own if it could get set up. This one actually has agility specifically for the Drake Assault so um, after an agility it can outspeed even a Scarf Drake Assault and if it gets a Cotton Guard up then it can take hits for days it can, it can kind of set up against it and it can start to make things happen and like I said um, if it gets set up with an agility it can just win on its own I feel like and everything else is kind of built to set up that that uh, interaction for, uh, and make that kind of happen here but obviously there's some huge hurdles here um, I'm gonna have to at least weaken the Ore Beetle and uh, the moral lull is a little bit of an issue, but we can deal with it. Everything else just kind of drops to a double if it gets really set up here. So uh, that is in team preview kind of going to be how I uh, approach this. Oh, I should also mention this was originally played on showdown. I did recreate the match uh, just playing against myself. So there will be one or two just kind of oddities in uh, how I have to recreate this match. But everything worked out decently well. It's just, again, this had to be played on showdown. Kurt uh does not have the kind of land thing uh, available to him but it's just something that i felt like i had to do this week even when i can't entirely find the motivation i feel like i have to put in my effort where i can uh and even just again um i've already played my next week's match against seabad so that's gonna be a spicy one uh but even then like i just have to put in the effort where i can even if uh things are kind of weird with that but with that i just want to get right into the match okay so i kind of go with another standard lead i kind of lead off with the right shoe once again and this was another situation where i was kind of afraid that once again there would be a scarfed lead that just kind of deals a whole lot of damage to my right shoe but at the same time i just felt like i had to at least risk it i didn't really want to switch anything else in on a potentially scarfed close combat but um i do end up volt switching out doing a lot of damage and it pretty much reveals specs right off the bat because specs would not have done half but because of the specs uh it does seem to be a 2 ko he does go for the knockoff on turn one as i go into the right on and this was a moment where i just felt like he could, there's nothing he could do to even touch my right on and i completely was not even thinking about leaf blade it leaf blade did not even enter my mind i have to admit that and that's just partially part of poor preparation and that poor preparation's partially down to um me not feeling the most mo motivated but 
It was a really unfortunate moment, right? It, I, I just felt really dumb. Like, I could have gone into my Dragapult there. I could have pulled a double if I really felt spicy about it. I just, but just 0% of me was thinking about, oh, and also, part of me just, it's really difficult to feel motivated when you get the play on showdown. It's just not the best um, form for me. I don't really feel comfortable doing it, but regardless, that's enough excuse making. Um, it does allow me to go in, go in, into the Raichu, even though I do take a pretty early deficit here. It does allow me to go into the Raichu, get a Volt Switch off, which will guarantee take out the Surf Edge, but he goes out into the Moral Lull, totally fine. It allows me to go into my Sylveon. Now, my Sylveon is a pretty bulky Sylveon. He doesn't know that yet. He, for all he knows, it could be Specs or whatever the case may be. But this feels like a solid opportunity to just go for the Mystical Fire. It's going to kind of just allow this thing to go crazy with any type of setup that it wants to do. But... Uh, he ends up going for the Spore, and that Spore was um, pretty unfortunate here, but my kind of goal here was just, there's really nothing else that I would want to switch in on, right? Because, like, the, the worst thing, I'm, I'm going through my head, right? The worst things that it can do to me is Leech Seed me, Moonblast me, nothing that I'm the most scared about. So, in my head, I'm just thinking, I'm just going to stay and try to wake up, and if he tries to make some kind of a switch that would allow him to kind of set up in my face then i'll react to that but until like something else i don't want to um do something that causes me to overreact now uh he does miss a leech seed which in the actual match yeah he did land his leech seed um and i let the leech seed go off uh now in the actual match um i stayed asleep for for one turn i got the leech seed off and you'll see in just a second uh, he does switch out, and I do wake up on the switch out. So I do get one extra hit off on this Shenotic, but it's not going to matter the most uh, in the overall uh, shape of this um, recreation. But basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an attack off on the switch in, which would have happened anyway, because in the original match, as he switches out, I wake up naturally anyway. So I do get a Mystical Fire off on this Orbeetle, which to me felt great because I knew that it was a really strong possibility that he was going to want to get a Sticky Web up. But my biggest concern on this interaction was that he would take this as an opportunity to try to set up Calm Minds. And, that, and this Sylveon is built to kind of prevent or beetle from getting out of hand right so it has the mystical fire so it can never really profitably just continue to calm mind up uh for free and just go up to plus million on the special attack at least and i i, I put this thing in a position where i'm it's forced to take me out and even if it does take me out then i have things in the back that can kind of counter manage it um but again the biggest thing is just don't let this thing calm mind up this sylveon is built to just um, mystical fire into this thing and no matter what happens just keep its uh, special attack low to not even make it worth it for this thing to want to calm mind up on me um, but here he in my head I, I think he knows that, that that's my intention so here I switch out thinking that he's gonna want to take advantage of me eventually right he's not gonna let me just pump mystical fires into this thing all gosh dang day so i kind of felt like if i kept doing that he was going to take advantage of me somehow i didn't know i didn't quite know yet how in that moment but the fact that he brought this in the, the way that he did just kind of screamed me steam engine at, uh, at least in the beginning but i felt just reasonably confident being able to take it out with a spec surf so i ended up going for the spec surf um but yeah just back to that uh whole, whole mystical fire thing um it just felt really uh, obvious to me that he, he would have felt like he got enough value out of that interaction out of just getting sticky webs that he was going to want to switch out and kind of take advantage of me somehow and um here i obviously can't stay and i can't just expect myself in a surf so i switch out i don't entirely remember into what oh yeah no i just go out into the into the eldegoss now i believe he just went for yeah he just goes for, for a moon blast just trying to get some damage off on me it's pretty unfortunate, but I don't think he can really touch me, right? Because obviously, we, we've already seen the lead seed. We've already seen the spore. So, there's not a whole heck of a lot that um, either of us could do here. So, I end up trying to pull a double, trying to get a little bit of momentum going. I thought, um, I really expected the Orbital to want to come in because uh, the Orbital felt like, obviously, the biggest threat to this um, Eldegoss. It can just get off really powerful bug buzzes, and it can honestly just take advantage and calm mind up to a million, which is really the biggest one of the biggest things that I'm trying to prevent in this entire matchup. So he he's gonna frisk my choice specs, and it's gonna be fine. But 
Uh, I'm just gonna get off some specs damage. I, I felt like I positioned myself really well in this moment and I felt ready to finally get off some spec shadow balls and start to make things happen and uh, this was a really kind of bold switch on my part because uh, honestly if he had gone into anything bulkier then I would have been in a little bit of trouble okay so no I actually don't think that it's time to get uh, shadow balls off uh, I probably ex expected him to switch um, but I end up going out into Melt Goss, obviously. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, so what I expected here was him to want to go out, go back out into the Moral Lull to kind of um, gauge damage and and especially if I wanted to go for a Draco, it would have eaten up the Draco, obviously. But I felt like this was going to be my my best opportunity to Rapid Spin because I, I guess I hard read the the, the Shenotic. I, I think I keep calling it Moral Lull and, I, and I'm probably going to keep doing that in all honesty. But... Um, but I, I, I think I thought that this was like my prime opportunity to get a, a rapid spin off because it's going to be tough to get it off any other time. And this felt like as good a time as any. And I guess, I, like I said, I just hard read the Shenotic to come in, which, uh, was again, pretty bold of me, but it felt l right in the moment. Right. So here I end up switching out because this Eldegoss, I guess I thought it was still important at this point in the match. And, um, he goes for the heavy slam. Yeah, so part of me also expected that, that he wouldn't go for a move here that would, strictly speaking, be able to, to Oko my, my, my Raichu. And here, Volt Switch is, is really free. I can take the opportunity to Surf, but I expected him to expect it, obviously, because I went for it the first time. So, he clicks Endure, actually. And Endure is pretty spicy, so immediately that's screaming to me steam engine obviously which i've already kind of felt out a little bit but it's also screaming weakness policy and that's honestly really interesting to me, interesting to me right so i really don't know what to do in that, with that information in the moment but regardless i'm volt switching out i go into the dragapult i really didn't know how to what to do in this interaction I really thought that he would want to switch out because I thought that he would think, um, right, like I could, I, I could scald, I could hydro pump, I can, uh, Draco, I can just get off a really strong spec shadow ball. I could do so much in this in situation that I thought he would want to switch out. I tried to take advantage of it with a U-turn. He holds his ground, and so, so this is a little bit of a recreation moment, but in the original match, I U-turned out into my Raichu. He went for Stone Edge and straight up O-Code me. Now. Um, the only reason that I went for Earth Power was because I thought that that would Oko and I thought that everything would, would be fine and I didn't have to risk a Stone Edge miss, but, uh, I guess this Colossal wasn't specially offensive enough to, to KO an incoming Raichu with Earth Power, so I kinda just had to do it again. I, I just had the Colossal go for Endorse so that I can just switch into Direct Wall and I can literally just do that, in, that interaction over again. I can get the U-turn off and, um... When the Raichu comes back in, I can click Earth Power, and that's essentially the re the recreation. Just a couple uh, turns delayed there, because uh, if he had landed a Stone Edge, he would have uh, just gotten that KO like it did, like it happened in the original match. That Raichu was honestly m more of a sack. It was really a situation where I, I kind of over over predicted. I went for the U turn, thinking that he was surely going to switch out, surely trying to preserve this thing, but it just didn't happen. So now I go into my double because now I'm starting to get a little spicy. I'm starting to think I'm already down. Double. I'm going to have to lean on, on double, buddy. So here we go. I He does end up switching out. And this was really interesting to me because he has to know that I'm fluffy, right? So um, he could have tried to go for some type of fire move. But this kind of is revealing to me that he doesn't have it. And I was kind of feeling that out a, a, a little bit, right? Because already he's, he's kind of running out of move slots. He's, he's, he's revealed um, Stone Edge, Endure, and something else. I don't think he ever really revealed Earth Power in the actual match. But he's already starting to, to, to reveal moves. That's starting to make me think that he doesn't have fire move. So I kind of had, had, had to risk it in that moment. But regardless, I felt like I could take a, any single fire move or whatever the case may be. He ends up switching out, allows me to get up in agility first, right? So now I, I now outspeed this entire team outside of Scarf's Keldeo, I think. Um, and I was able to call that, that Leech Seed, and I'm able to sub up, and this allows me to get a Cotton Guard up for absolutely free. Uh, well, at the expense of a little bit of HP, but not as much HP as if I'd just, uh, taken a, taken a raw moon blast, and especially not, uh, just from taking a, from taking a, 
leechied because he leechied would have been really really bad in this situation obviously it would have counteracted my my leftovers it would have made it impossible to try to, to try to sub up and now i have to have i kind of have to feel out this interaction right because i think he could expect me to want to sub up again um and this was honestly a lot of mind games going on in my head right because I th i'm thinking what if he thinks that this is his opportunity to, to leechied maybe i i should sub but he could take advantage of that he could just moon blast in which case obviously that'd be a pretty bad play it would just give it give up hp for nothing so i had to make a call here as to whether or not i would try to leech eat or attack and i do end up calling it semi correctly and now i'm starting to think now is gonna, now is when he's gonna take his opportunity to want to leech seed so I, I try to get another sub up and he doesn't leech seed he goes for the moon blast and now i'm uh not feeling the best obviously about this interaction but we're trying to deal with it we're, we're, we're trying to manage and uh again it's just it's just gonna be some more head games so okay so this is so i had to fudge things up a little bit for the sake of the recreation but what happened here in the sequence of turns was pretty hilarious so in, in in the original match i went for body press he went for leech seed now on the body press i got a effects board and it paralyzed me so what i thought the, the way that i was going to fix it was i'm going to give this more little um thunder wave the shenotic the thunder wave i'm going to let him thunder wave me and then that's going to re recreate it in for, for the sake of this um for the sake of this re recording but uh what i ended up having was i got the effects for any poison me this time now it's not going to end up mattering for the sake of the recreation because of what happens in a few turns but it just felt so silly i put thunder wave on this thing specifically for this interaction and it did end up mattering so so what what happened was i body pressed into into the into the more lull into the synodic he went for lead sheet. He missed the lead sheet, but on that same turn, he got the effects for paralysis. So I thought th the basic recreation would be just click Thunder Wave, I get paralyzed, and everything basically happens as it normally would. So here is a situation where the search fetch comes in, and I have to figure out what, what I want to do. I actually do click agility in, in the original match because I really do still want to outspeed um, a lot of his team. But I get paral I get fully paralyzed and I and I eat up a close combat in, in the original match. And on the second close combat I get critted. Here on the first close combat I get critted. Again, it, it never ultimately matters because I because I mean I got a effect sword poison and as long as I still get um close combated crit, uh it doesn't ultimately matter. My plan in that moment was honestly just to spam uh, 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 agility over and over again until I either got taken out or critted by that close combat. But yeah, this allows me to go in my Dragon Ball. I, I'm pretty confident that this thing doesn't have any priority. I don't think this has like um, scrappy quick attack or anything like that. It, it, it frees me up to just click uh, Shadow Ball he ends up going into the um colossal yeah that's what that thing's called and he ends up going for the endure as well which uh confused me in the moment i thought maybe he could think that i have scald but he's already frisked choice specs uh and i, I try to be faithful in, in in the recreation and i went for endure even though it, it didn't really affect anything uh it, for the overall match uh regardless but uh it was just again a, a moment that confused me because um because i guess he could have thought that that i could go for the scald and if he endured then uh scald would have um gotten him his weakness policy and his steam engine but he you know he's first that i was specs and i specced myself in his shadow ball so i don't know regardless what this is going to do is uh allow in the the keldeo i switch out into the eldegoss thinking that again this thing is not going to have much for my Eldegoss. He gets the Icy Wind off. And I believe I just go for a Leech Seed on this turn. Um, and things aren't aren't looking great. At, at, at this point, it's really not looking great. Dragapult's going to have to do a lot in order for this uh, to end up having... In order for me to end up having any chance here. But I believe I end up just going for the Leech Seed trying to make something happen. I expect this thing to, to want to switch. I don't think it's going to want to stay in here. Yeah. And... I maybe probably just should have just pulled the double, but in comes the surfetched, and I'm thinking here. Okay, I'll. I think I'll be okay. I think I can take any single hit, and I, and I 
can at least wear this thing down with least heat. I can try to make, I don't know, something happen. I don't even know. I don't even really know in my head what I what I think I'm going to make happen here. But that's my thinking here because uh, this Elder Goss isn't really going to do much for the rest of this match anyway. Um, I get poison jabbed and I don't take one. Now, here's another moment. Uh, and I get crit, which is fine. Uh, now, here's another moment where I just had a really... I, I I don't know what I I don't even know what I could say that I thought here, but I ended up going into my Sylvia. Now I have an okay fast Sylveon. Um, I put a little bit of speed in into Sylveon to outspeed something. I believe it might have been a no speed. I don't know. It might have been a. I mean, it, it might have even been been a surfetch with a decent amount of speed, but I didn't go all out into speed, obviously. Uh, but this surf edge went pretty much all out in in a speed. I think this surf edge had like 220 speed, and, and I think it was still adamant. But uh, it, it was more than enough to just to just kind of deal with me. I I did have a decent amount of speed into my my Sylveon, but obviously not enough. And I just sank off my Sylveon again. I don't think it it would ever it would have ever really mattered, but. Um, I'm just gonna bring in my Dragapult. My Dragapult can 100% pick up this KO, and we can try to make things happen. Now, I was thinking about it in my head, thinking about whether or not that was an active choke or what happened there. And again, this was another situation where my head was no longer just in this match anymore. After uh, a lot of things that that happened in my head, the, the match was already over. But um, I, I could play it out in my head a little bit, right? If I had gone into the Dragapult in initially, I could have. Kept the Sylveon in, in in the back. I could have gotten a Shadow Ball off, taken out the Surf Edged, and I, and I think, probably, um, it, it's really difficult. It, it's still really difficult to win. So, so this uh, Keldeo ha has a Salt Vest, right? So, in the original match, I got a Special Defense drop, which he thought was was really scary. He ends up switching out on this turn, right? So maybe there is a situation where where uh, Dragapult can KO everything, but it's going to struggle to get past the Keldeo, and maybe I can make an argument that that if he goes for icy winds against my Dragapult, I can switch in the Sylveon. I can tr I can try to take it out with the, with the Sylveon, and I can try to even out the, the, the playing field a little bit. However, found out after the match, this um, this is a slightly mixed Heldio with Poison Jab, so it was meant to at least deal a lot of damage to my to my Sylveon, and I don't think my Sylveon ever really takes hits from the Dracozole anyway, so I don't think it really mattered, but truth be told, I was still actively throwing, so it doesn't really make it that much better regardless. Um, so the special defense drop scared him, scared him enough where he switched out into the Ore Beetle to kind of just sack that off. And uh, that is how the match ends. He just is able to, to bring it back in. Icy Wind is a 2 KO. We get week 11 ends, right? Um, it was really interesting match. I don't think that I built particularly well. I also didn't um, put the most amount of time into team building. Uh, I also really didn't have a solid matchup, right? So I'll, I just a lot of vectors of, of lack of motivation. But obviously, hats off to Kurt. He's been building fantastically throughout this entire season. I, it's been really fun to watch him build. He definitely deserves uh, this kind of streak that he's been on. He uh, has been playing really, really well. He's been building phenomenally. But uh, with that, that's going to be for me. That's going to be uh, week 11 of the NCP. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the NC. Well, with the final week of the NCP, and I think we're out of playoffs, so I'm not even gonna gonna say anything about that. But uh, more weeks of the TBL coming up really, really soon, and uh, many, many more things to come after that really, really soon. Especially once the DLC comes out. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Gonna be once again out.